Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim Jong Gary needs to resign. He is an absolute disgrace and a liar. Now, I, I recently covered Kim Jong Gensler's vomit inducing op ed in the Wall Street Journal. Is this one? Don't worry, I'm not going to go through it again. But uh, this is the headline here is from just a few days back. The SEC treats crypto like the rest of the capital markets. Completely vomit-inducing. Lots of upchuckery occurring as a result of this existing. Now, I then covered Attorney John Deaton's rebuttal op-ed that appeared on Fox Business's website. And here it is. It's titled, Gary Gensler's Gross SEC Overreach. And I am glad to see that happen, because Fox Business, my, my gosh, they're monstrous. In May, I can't remember exactly what the number was, but they had something like 182 million clicks on their website, or it was something to that effect, but just a, a massive, massive reach, and Attorney John Deaton's rebuttal op-ed against Kim Jong Gensler is on the site, and I covered that in full detail. Well, now, I'm going to share with you opinions from all sorts of people shredding Gensler's highly destructive approach to regulating the cryptocurrency asset class, so my... My number one hope in this video is that you find this very satisfying. I hope you find this genuinely, truly satisfying because Kim Jong Gensler is a piece of trash so far as I'm concerned. Which leads us to this article from Crypto Briefing titled, uh, You Need to Resign, end quote. Crypto fans slam Gensler's regulation comments. And oh, this is absolutely fantastic. So check this out. Uh, several prominent crypto personalities called for Gensler to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF in response to the piece. Now, Gary Gensler's latest comments on the digital asset market have gone down like a lead balloon in the crypto community. The SEC chair published an op-ed titled, The SEC Treats Crypto Like the Rest of the Capital Markets, in the Wall Street Journal Monday, discussing how he thought crypto should be regulated to protect investors. In the piece, Gensler said that there's, quote, no reason to treat the crypto market differently from the rest of the capital markets, end quote, just because it uses new technology, echoing his affirmations that securities laws should apply to digital assets as they do to uh, traditional financial instruments. Now, Gensler drew attention to BlockFi and other crypto lending platforms that faced insolvency crises in the June market meltdown, saying that they must comply with regulations regardless of how they market their services. And I'll just pause and note, as far as BlockFi is concerned, I mean, look, a couple things on this, actually. So I've, I've never been a fan of these companies that say, hey, give us your cryptocurrency. We'll hold it for you. Just give us your keys. We'll just put it in our account. We'll hold it, though the keys are ours, and you get to earn interest for loaning out your crypto. Sometimes crazy interest, actually. With BlockFi, it wasn't as nuts, but with some platforms, it was upwards of like 20%, which should be a red flag for, frankly, anyone. But even if it's a reasonable amount, even if it's like a 7 or 8% and it doesn't sound wacky on the surface, I'm just sitting here thinking, you understand that you can have thousands of percent gains in crypto just holding it in, in like your own personal custody, and you want to go the extra bit to get 7 points? You're going to, for 7%, 8%, even if it's 20%, you're going to go ahead and hand that over and hope that the firm's not going to be insolvent. I'm just sitting here like, ugh. That's why, like, for me, I, I've been speaking out against the concept forever. Now, if people want to do it, they should be able to do it. I, I believe in free and open markets. If people want to do that, cool. I use the word cool very loosely there. Uh, definitely not for me. Definitely not for me. But again, people should be able to do whatever the hell that they want. But... Um, you know, as, as far as insolvency, well, when uh, when the government came after them, what ended up happening is BlockFi, if memory serves, they paid something like a $100 million fine. And then when when crypto markets hit tough times, well, you know, that puts stress on every, every entity in the space. And so we're still waiting to see what happened to BlockFi, but a bunch of people lost their jobs. It makes it that much harder for this firm because uh, Gary Gensler and the SEC, well, the SEC is terrible. Gary Gensler, what a jerk. And because of their their approach to, quote-unquote, regulating crypto, it harmed actual people there, too. So it's not just XRP holders, uh, and granted, fine, we're taking the brunt of it currently, but there's all sorts of other market participants that are being harmed. There are companies that have employees, and then as an extension, the employees' families. You know, it's, it's not good stuff. Well, take a look at this quote, though, from Ginzer. Across decades of cases, the Supreme Court has made clear that the economic realities of a product, not the labels, determine whether it is a security, end quote. Uh, Ginzer said, referencing lending platforms 
crypto exchanges and DeFi applications. He added that any lenders offering securities fall under the SEC's jurisdiction and warned that the agency would serve as, quote, the cop on the beat, end quote, for any entities that fail to protect consumers. So it's the same old crap that we've been hearing from Gary Gensler ever since he took the uh, the number one spot running the SEC here. But here's where the satisfying part kicks in in this latest Moon Lambo hot jam. This is where you get to hear everybody ripping him to shreds, and this is absolutely fantastic and well-deserved, and Gary Gensler needs to freaking resign, damn it. But check this out. Reads as follows. While some praised Gensler for his comments, multiple members of the crypto community took shots at him on Twitter over the paywalled piece. And let's pause and note, it's on Wall Street Journal, so not everybody necessarily had access to it. But take a look at this. Here's a quote. You can't have local regs for a global, permissionlessly accessible financial system. He thinks you're too dumb to understand this, end quote, said Starkiller Capital Chief Investment Officer Lay Drogon. So think about that. And this is, this is in line with points that I've been saying and so many others in the world of crypto. You're going to have local regulations. So when you say local, think about it. Even if it's the entirety of the United States, you're going to have United States regulations for a global permissionless accessible financial system. In the case of the XRP ledger, it's completely decentralized. Nobody in the United States even has control over it, but you're going to have some sort of weird regulation over it, which based on the way the SEC is approaching this would lead one to believe that there's actually an entity in the United States that can actually control this and is in charge of it. Well, hell no. That's why it's stupid AF. It doesn't make any damn sense up in this bitch. And they know that. That's why they're terrible people. These are monsters. Absolutely terrible horrendous humans that nature accidentally created, so far as I'm concerned. Here's another quote. This U.S. government official unironically showed his paywall link instead of just acknowledging openly that basically he thinks the entire global economy should already simply comply with U.S. regulations as if America really was the legal capital of the globe, end quote, added uh, D5D at Jeans. Now, see, that's in line with what the first thing said, too. Yeah, just, uh, America's just to make it up. The rest of the world, yeah, they have to decentralize. America doesn't have any special powers over these blockchains that are decentralized, but do what we say. Oh, because reasons. Gotcha. Oh, it's always because, you ever notice that? It's always because reasons. And the piece continues. CoinShares Chief Strategy Officer Meltem Demirs also weighed in. And here's a quote from Meltem. She said, instead of writing op-eds, Maybe the agency could try, A, engaging with the market participants it's supposed to oversee, and then, B, make pragmatic, practicable rules and enforce them equally, end quote, she wrote. And so, I, so right there, clearly, Meltem Demers asking for too much. Asking for a bit too much from SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim jong Gay, because he doesn't give a damn what Meltem Demers or anybody else in the crypto space thinks. Because reasons, folks. Because reasons. Peace continues. Dizer Capital founder Yasin Mobarek was particularly scathing, accusing the former banker of corruption. And here's a quote from Yasin Mobarek. There's no reason why you shouldn't disclose your connections to Vanguard, J.P. Morgan, and Goldman Sachs, he wrote. You need to resign. The stench of corruption on you is suffocating, end quote. Woohoo! Full-fledged clap on that one. I'm trying to get it uh, you know, far enough away from the mic that it's not startling anybody. Hopefully that worked. Full-fledged clap. We don't, no, 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 golf clap on that one. That bitch needs to resign. I, I'm t I just, I have no patience for, for Gary Gensler or these assets at the SEC because you know that they're sociopaths. I've, I've pulled up the definition. They, they perfectly fit the definition of sociopaths. These are terrible people. They don't care. They can't even empathize with what people are going through. It's all about them and furthering their careers. These are monsters of people. And then they note here um, in the article, Gensler, who formerly worked at Wall Street to giant Goldman Sachs and had an estimated net worth of up to $119 million in February 2021, has never been found guilty of corruption. Hey, fair enough enough. Never been found guilty of corruption. But uh, where exactly are your values? Oh, wait, uh, I guess I should say. What's up with your lack of values? That's a probably better way, a little bit more precise to discuss this topic. Peace continues. Several others, including the prominent crypto personalities Kobe and Lupify, took the opportunity to press Gensler on the SEC's decision to stall on approving a spot Bitcoin ETF. Sounds good. Spot ETF then? Question mark, said Kobe. Since taking the helm of the SEC in 2021, 
Genzer has frequently drawn the ire of the crypto community. Much of the frustrations have stemmed from the SEC's refusal to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF, and Genzer's repeated comments on how digital assets should be regulated. While he has made it clear that he thinks many crypto tokens qualify as securities, the SEC has not yet published clear guidelines on the matter. No, they have not. They definitely have not. And so there we are. Feel free to openly and freely let me know what you think on the topic of whether or not Kim Jong Ginzer should resign. Should he? Or do you think that he should remain the supreme leader of the SEC? Oh, I'm looking forward to hearing your comments, but I'm wrapping up right now. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.